So I'm um, just making videos that are me just sharing my thoughts. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Uh, and I chose the color green for this background because it's my boyfriend's favorite color. Um, I guess one of my thoughts is, first, I want to apologize for when I laugh or giggle so much during my videos. I can't really help it. Um, it's not that I find it funny what I'm saying. Um, it's just when I get nervous or... Pretty much a lot of emotions <laughs> can stir me to giggle. Uh, you know, sometimes I really am just happy and giggling and laughing. And then other times I'm nervous or, you know, uh, shy. <laughs> I guess you could say mostly just nervous. So I, I get a, a nervous giggle is what I get. Uh, and for when I'm recording myself, so... That's, you know, kind of nervous for me. Even though I think I've recorded quite a bit for being nervous. <laughs> um, you know, as I said, I have ADHD, so my, my mind is going a lot. Um, and I think there's a lot I've just been holding back and being quiet about because, you know, my family, they just... I don't really get a chance to open up so much, so... I guess, you know, I've recorded a lot even though I'm nervous because there's a lot going on in my mind. Um, I also want to explain why I mention the house cleaning a lot when I'm describing my family or my sister and such. Uh, it's not that I'm a perfectionist and feel like the house has got to be clean. Actually, I'm very much so the opposite. I'm very laid back. I think it's good to have a house decent, but as for obsessing to the point that, I mean, you've just not living much anymore, you're not really enjoying living in that home, then I, I don't do that, and I don't think that's healthy either. I mean, if you really like doing that, and that's what you enjoy doing, then I, I guess go ahead, obsess, because that, that to you is living and having fun. <laughs> for me, it's not. Um... But if that's having fun to you, then you, you go ahead and cling to your heart's happiness. Um, but the reason why I, I focus in on that more than anything is because uh, that seems to be my family's obsession. Uh, in particular, my mom, she's, ever since I can remember, always wanted the house clean all the time. And we could never get it clean to her liking. I mean, even when we got it clean... She would find one little thing, and it was always, this house is a mess. If somebody walked in here, I would be embarrassed. Um, you know, and, you know, now that we're adults, and she still obsesses over it. Um, but she'll get on to my ass about it, and uh, I know some people don't like swearing, so sorry if I swear, but... I, I don't think I'm going to warn when I'm swearing anymore because, frankly, I just swear from time to time. And I think if anybody gets a chance to watch these videos, you probably figured that out by now. Uh, so if you don't mind swearing, that's great. Just keep enjoying watching. Um, not really sure how much enjoyment you can get out of this, but <laughs> uh, maybe you'll just find out you're not alone. And maybe you feel like you're the black sheet of the family and you get to... But there's other black sheep too. So I, I maybe in a sense you might enjoy it. <laughs> Just not feeling alone. Which is the kind of the point why I'm recording these videos. Um, that's about it really. Um, and uh, I guess if you don't like swearing then you don't have to keep watching. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, not that anybody is probably watching. If you don't like swearing, you probably already stopped. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, you know, the reason why I focus on the house cleaning so much is because that seems to be their main focus. And they will get on my ass about it. And they will um, get upset with me. And my sister, particularly, um, she pretty much acts like... She uh, my baby sister, she pretty much acts like she's perfect and does no wrong. 
Um, and she does not mind getting onto me if she thinks I've uh, misplaced something. And that's why it makes it so much more difficult to clean because um, they'll get mad at me if they feel something was misplaced. And, that, and then all the same, they'll get mad at me if I don't pick up these items and pick up after them. And yes, they have gotten mad at me. And that's a big reason why sometimes I just take papers on the floor and I put it in a basket and I, I just keep doing so until they're ready to look through their papers. Because if I actually try to organize things, then uh, they will get mad for me losing their papers. Even though that was their responsibility to take care of those to begin with. And they'll get mad at me if they're left on the floor. So I pretty much just do what I can do at that moment. And then just kind of pick them up. Um, and they're upset things are not organized. <laughs> so it's like I really am in a losing situation. All I can do is try to find the, the most peaceful route I can. So the reason I bring up the house cleaning so much is because that's what they obsess over. Um, but yet, you know, like my sister, she doesn't mind acting like I'm imperfect and like I'm something broken and a piece of shit. Um, yet she herself does not clean. I mean, today even the house is still a mess. It is just ridiculously a mess right now. Uh, and the only reason I'm not doing it yet is because I'm trying to get my toe to heal. Um, which it is doing a lot better. So I'm thinking by, you know, the day after tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll probably just be able to clean it all up. Uh, as of right now, I'm just going to, like, keep healing. <laughs> um, so that's the reason I, I focus so much on the, the house cleaning. It's not that I really am obsessive and a perfectionist. I'm actually very much so the opposite. Um... I think a little mess here and there is completely okay. It's it's human. It shows you live in a home, and it shows you're enjoying that home. So, you know, little messes don't bother me. I'm, I'm completely fine. My family, on the other hand, uh, little messes do bother them. And... But they don't want to put the effort into picking up those messes, even though they're... Those are their messes. And... Uh, Including my baby sister. She doesn't pick up her messes. Um, I'm the one picking up after her. So it's a little weird. Like I don't understand why they obsess so much with making sure that someone's cleaning everything. But they themselves don't want to pick up after themselves. But at the same time they want to put blame on one person. And they don't take responsibility for their messes. And they act like they're perfect. But... The other person is terrible, even though that one person is cleaning everything. And that person would be me. So, <laughs> it's just all kinds of confusing. Like, I don't get how that works in their head. I do not know how they twisted that all up in their head of how I'm completely imperfect. And I'm the problem for all the messes, even though they're the one making the messes. And somehow they're perfect, and I'm not, even though I'm the one cleaning up their messes. So, um, there's the only reason why I uh, focus so much on the uh, cleaning. Uh, because that seems to be their problem. <laughs> uh, I honestly could care less. I really could. You know, if somebody's really that bad that they're just have their house a wreck I think maybe you should clean it up it's really not healthy living like that but all the same if you are so obsessed with cleaning 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 to where you can't even enjoy life that I also think it's not healthy I, I think that you just kind of have to keep a balance you know I guess be slightly a little hippie just keep things decent but you know not so obsessed with keeping it so clean that you, you miss out on life and you miss out on enjoying your home. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's pretty much how I feel about cleaning and, you know, keeping a house clean. And 
that's why I, I bring up the cleaning of the house so much. It, it's more so that's because it's my family's obsession. It really is not mine, though. Um, it, I just bring up the cleaning thing because it just confuses me. Why is it such an obsession? But yet they act like they're perfect and I'm not, even though I'm cleaning up the things that they obsess that I should clean up after. Uh, just very confusing. It's a big reason why I feel like I'm taken advantage of and not appreciate it very much so at all. Because, I mean, if I'm cleaning up things and yet that I'm still in trouble. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how that works. Other than they're cranky and they want to lash out at someone. And that's about it. Um, my sister, though, I think she's just plain spoiled. I think she's been raised with an environment that it was okay for her to, you know, get upset. And nobody told her that, you know, that's wrong and is immature. Uh, so she's in a state of mind where she really believes it's okay for her to be upset. I think my mom, I think sometimes she plays a game in her head where she convinces herself it's okay when it's not. And I think sometimes she deliberately does it. Um... So I guess you could say either way it's a form of manipulation, whether it's manipulating herself or manipulating a situation just so she could release tension. Um, my dad, I think very much so he's highly a manipulator. Um, I've known that since I was a kid, pretty much. Um, he's also very egotistic and very, very much so self-centered. I would say narcissistic. Um, which is kind of where his manipulation comes in. He's narcissistic, and he acts like he's very important. But as all narcissists, they don't believe they're being narcissistic. They don't believe they're self-centered. Everyone else can see it but them. <laughs> um, you know, and... He'll use that as a moment to manipulate because he really doesn't want people getting on to him for being selfish. So, he just manipulates it so hopefully you'll shut up and leave him alone. Uh, you know, because anybody who's narcissistic, they don't want to hear they're uh, narcissistic. They, they'd rather you just let them stay in their delusion and believe that they're not being narcissistic and keep taking advantage of you and using you and abusing you sometimes. Uh, and I'm not, I would say, I think we all know something like that, but I'm not sure. Cause you know, I've met a lot of people and it seems like not everybody has met someone like that, but I can say there's a lot of people that have, um, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people I've met that know somebody or have met somebody like that. And a lot of times have been married to someone like that. So I probably don't need to go in describing it so much because I think most people really know what kind of person I'm talking about. And you probably know someone or you've known someone like that before and you know how frustrating that is and just how freaking annoying it can be because it's like, you know you don't matter. You know you're not important to them. You know you have absolutely zero value to them. Um yet they will deny it all the way and they will keep treating you with no value or any dignity. And it's a very frustrating place to be. It's very depressing. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I said I was going to share some thoughts on here. So, um, I guess what I'll share on here more after talking a little bit and explaining some things there is that you know I think a lot of people have difficulty when it comes to being in a relationship I mean uh, I know some people might think that my advice is absolutely irrelevant beings that I haven't been in a relationship till now um I, you know, that's okay, that's your opinion, you're allowed to think that, um, but all the same, uh, I think what kept me from being in a relationship so long until I'm 30 years old now, uh, well, actually, I was 29 when that happened, but I'm 30 now, but, um, is because I, I valued 
what it would mean to have another person in my life. I valued that. I valued what that would mean for me to be in someone else's life. Um, to the point that I rather wait until I found somebody that could see as much value in it as I did. Um, and yeah, that left me very, very lonely. I, you know, it would hurt seeing that I wasn't valued by others at all. They didn't want me. And yeah, a lot of it had, okay, the only thing it had to do with was because I wanted to wait till I was married. To be honest, there was guys that really just seemed to take a liking to me. I mean, they would just be like wishing they had a girl like me. I mean, I cooked, I cleaned, I was nice, I was friendly, I didn't bitch about much, and then they would find out I want to wait till I'm married. And then all of a sudden, everything they really liked about me was irrelevant to them. Like, the only thing they really cared about was sex. And that hurt, because I, I didn't say I wanted to be a nun. <laughs> I just said I wanted to wait till I was married. Um, you know, and I think that's sad then. That someone could obsess over sex so much to the point that that's the only important thing. Um, I don't think that's bad to want to have sex or, or make love to the person that uh, you love. But I think it's wrong when it's to the point that that's all that really matters to you. You don't really care about their soul. You don't care about who they really are. You don't care about their personality, and if they really care or love you, you just care that they'll sleep with you. Uh, that, I think, is all in all very, very sad. Because if it hadn't been for those one thing, I might have had a lot of freaking suitors, but because of that one thing, they would literally just hurt me very badly and pretend I did not exist. Um, you know, uh, and that's just one thing I've noticed where people don't value people in a relationship anymore. Uh, but there's a lot more than that. I, you know, <laughs> being that I wasn't in a relationship, uh, and, you know, because I valued what it would mean so much, I, you know, it gave me a lot of time to observe things about others, observe things about myself. And, uh, you know, it gave me a lot of time to know what I would want and, you know, what things could I do. Um, you know, and seeing what a lot of other people were doing. Uh, you know, and <laughs> it's not just the fact that people are obsessed of what should be going on in their relationship. I've noticed sometimes the obsession extends outward and they, they have advice of how they feel everybody else should be running their relationship. And that's not what I'm about to discuss or say is that I think I know how to run your relationship. I don't. I think that each individual relationship is different. But I think if you really want it to last, the thing you need to do is make sure you're valuing that person and expressing and showing that value. And that's by doing things that they perceive and know that they are valued. But equally, it's finding a person that's going to value you the same way in return. By showing things, showing um, actions toward you that you perceive as showing that you are valuable. Um, and what I mean by that is... I know some people are like, go get your girlfriend flowers, propose to her at sunset, you know, do it this way and that way. I mean, they have a whole bunch of rules of how you can make your girlfriend happy. And not all women are that way. Some women are more night owls. They like the evening, not so much sunset or morning or afternoon. They like the evening. Some are morning girls. And I do not understand how you do that because I am a night owl. <laughs> Sorry, just poking a bit of fun. Uh, no offense to the early birds. Um, clearly, y'all have a usefulness. <laughs> uh, a usefulness I cannot fulfill. Um, but as do I have a usefulness. 
as I'll be doing all the work that you won't be doing at evening. <laughs> so, you know, I believe everybody has their place <laughs> that they work well in. And that being said, that's what I also believe in with uh, a relationship. I think everybody has their place that works for them individually. Um, you know, so if you're in love with someone or, you know, with someone right now, the thing I would say is get to know that person. Find what they find valuable, what helps them feel valuable. And also make sure that they are doing the same thing right back for you. Because I think that's very important. You don't want to be with somebody who doesn't value you. You're not going to feel loved. You're going to feel very lonely. You're going to feel like you're not really wanted there. You might feel like I do with my family right now who doesn't seem to appreciate anything. And yeah. <laughs> And that's a hard space to be when you can love somebody so much and just feel like you're never going to be good enough in their eyes. It, you know, it can put you in a really bad state mentally sometimes. And that's why I would say always make sure the other person values you just as much. Um, and I know that, that, that suggestion sounds quite simple and all, like, okay, so... I just show this person I value them, and then they show me that uh, they value me. Um, I know, it's really not that simple, is it? Because <laughs> each person, as I said, is very, very different. You, some girls are early birds, so they might like a little breakfast in bed. To them, that might be a sign of you valuing them. Or maybe they don't want breakfast in bed. Maybe they just want a little coffee in the morning. Um... Or heck, maybe they're they're an introvert and <laughs> you're with an introvert. So maybe they actually like that alone time in the morning. So you can just, you give them what they want and you get what you want. And that's a little extra time to sleep in bed. <laughs> it's mostly figuring out and, you know, finding out who that person is individually and what it is that makes them feel appreciated. Um, you know... Uh, I think a typical guy thing you notice is they, they like food. <laughs> and particularly my boyfriend, he definitely loves food. So part of showing my appreciation to him is making sure I cook a really big meal. And he does not like have an ounce of fat anywhere. So I don't know how that works out. <laughs> but he, you know, he, <laughs> he's tiny. He can just scarf down more than I do. And here I am, this chubby girl. And here he is, this tiny guy. And it's like, how did that happen? <laughs> Seriously, how did that happen? But you get it. That is one way I could show I appreciate him. Um, is cooking him a very big meals. So that he always feels full instead of hungry. Uh, because he's really into his food. He's a foodie guy. He loves his food. Uh, but let's say your guy is different. Maybe he's not into food. Maybe he's into something else. Maybe he's into video games. Maybe he's into movies or music. And maybe he's one of those rare guys that are just into culture. <laughs> and likes theater and dance and all these fancy, fancy things. <laughs> you know, if these are things that make him feel appreciated, then you know right there what you have to do to make him feel appreciated to know that let him know this is how much you appreciate him and it's the same way guys and you do that for the girls or whoever you're in a relationship you know for all I know you could be transgender or homosexual so you know you'll I okay do this for your significant other <laughs> find out what it is that makes them feel appreciated and do that for them. But equally make sure they appreciate you right back. And, uh, you know, sometimes your girls can be different. Maybe they, uh, <laughs> maybe they're a big foodie like my, my sweetheart is and they want some food. 
maybe they're not. Maybe they like working out. I think you're insane. But, you know, <laughs> if that's what you like, then do that. I, on the other hand, I, I like going on nice walks. And I do not really want to do these heavy, heavy workouts. I might like a little mild workout, but. That, to me, is not, like, very romantic. But, you know, maybe to some girls, they like working out. Maybe to some, they want to go to the beach or the just the lake. And maybe some of them, just like I said, might be an introvert. There's some that just like that quiet time, actually. <laughs> um, and they actually want alone time. They love you to pieces. But they want that, that alone time. So it's like almost sort of meditative. Like they just want to be alone for a second with their own thoughts and their own soul and at peace with that. So, you know, whatever girl or guy or whoever you are is like that you're dating or married, I would say, you know, show them you appreciate them and make sure that they do the same back for you and find out in their own action of language or verbal language you might say of how it is that they feel appreciated um and you know make sure that they do the same for you uh, and making sure that they do the same for you brings me to the next thing on my thoughts and that is communication <laughs> um you know i i've noticed a lot of couples you know as i was waiting for my special someone you know, I did notice there was a lot, and I mean a lot of communic- uh, mis- not, not very good communication. <laughs> um, and sometimes it didn't have to do that the other person wasn't expressing things or they weren't expressing things. It had to do with a lot that they just didn't understand each other. You might say men and women have their own language. I, though, was that girl that was always hanging around the guys. <laughs> I didn't in particular like hanging around women. A lot of times they wanted to get me out of my skater shoes and my baggy pants and my t-shirt. And they wanted me to wear high heels and a dress. And I didn't want to do that. And they wanted me to wear makeup. I also didn't want to do that. <laughs> I felt comfortable in who I was and what I was wearing. Uh, and the guys never seemed to have a problem with it. And they would sit there and joke around and make fart jokes and just be freaking dudes, and it was hilarious. And I would just hang around them, too. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I hung around guys for that reason. There was less judgment and more bonding as a friend. Um, and accepting of who I was and less judging and trying to change me kind of thing. So, uh, you know, growing up, I did very much so hang around the guys more often for that reason. And I guess you could say I learned a lot about guys then. <laughs> um, one was when they say that's cool or that's nice uh, to them, it's equivalent to beautiful or awesome or amazing. It really is all the same to them. And this this is a miscommunication I've noticed in their relationships because women want to hear, oh, wow, you're amazing. Oh, that is gorgeous. I love that. Uh, they don't really know that women have different stages. <laughs> like, nice is, eh, that's okay and it's suitable. Beautiful is, oh, wow, you are making my heart pump right now. And awesome and amazing is just pretty freaking awesome. I mean, like, it's one of the most glorious things you can be told is you're beautiful, amazing, and awesome. Like, Nice is never what a woman wants to hear. <laughs> but as I said, I noticed the women, they didn't seem to understand nice was the same as beautiful and awesome and amazing to a guy. It was all the same to him. Um, you know, they either liked it or they don't. So nice meant they like it. And if they don't say nice, then you know, they really just don't like it. Um, and, you know, uh, this one may be difficult for women. You just want a guy to know what you're thinking. And he doesn't know that. 
there's like these rare fellas out there that can read you, but most guys, they cannot. So there's a lot of miscommunication because women don't understand that nice means you're hot. And men do not understand that nice means eh to a woman. <laughs> so it's the same problem when a woman just sits there. Sometimes she's upset. Or she's excited and she wants him to recognize her new haircut. She wants him to recognize her new outfit. And guys, just don't. <laughs> um, or maybe she's upset and she wants him to read that. Like, But guys, they just... A lot of them do not seem to have that intuition that us women have. Like, even with a stranger, for the most part, as women can read each other, we're like, oh, that girl is trouble. <laughs> And that's just how the first meeting you pretty much can read you pretty well. Um, you know, you don't know a person until you get to know them. But for the most part, you know, I've noticed women, they have an idea whether they want to know you or not by first meeting you. Uh, sure, they don't know your whole background or your life story. And maybe you deserve a chance to be, you know, uh, to get to know better. Uh, I mean, you get what I'm saying. Women, from the first start of meeting you, can pretty much get an idea sometimes whether they want to know you or not. <laughs> um, or if you're even worthwhile in their eyes to, you know, give a chance to get to know. Um, like, oh my gosh, this person I have so much in relation to. We're like soulmates. Um, you know, and but guys, they don't really have that kind of intuition to read your mind. Um, they might be able to figure out whether they like somebody as a person or not, but it has to do with is that person expressing things to them. Uh, so I know women, they don't want to hear this, but if you want your guy to know you're angry or your partner to know you're angry or upset or sad or hurting, you're going to have to express it to them. You cannot expect them to read your mind. I've had guy friends for like how many years? And I can tell you for certain, none of them could read my mind. They always had to know what's going on. I always had to verbalize with them. Um, so if you want someone to know you're upset, you can't expect them to be just so connected they just know you're upset. You have to connect with them and express that you're upset or you're sad. So, in a sense, you're kind of keeping the connection away that you want to have by not connecting and expressing it yourself. Um, I, I meant no offense by that, but that's pretty much what's going on. Um, and, guys, if you could, try to say amazing, beautiful, and awesome as much as possible in replace of nice <laughs> when you're talking to your girlfriend or your wife. <laughs> Because it means a lot to them. You can keep saying nice when it has to do with your buddies. But when it comes to your girlfriend or wife, always replace the word nice with amazing, beautiful, or awesome. Um, I personally, with my boyfriend, do not make him try to say awesome, beautiful, or amazing. He says nice, and I understand what that means. So I just don't <laughs> get on to him about that. He... You know, and I don't expect him to read my mind. I very much so verbalize what's going on in my head when I'm upset about something. Which has not really ever been toward him. It's just been things going on. And he's been a sweetheart. And he's always been there when I'm telling him what's going on. So, you know, I would say verbalizing is a very big and useful thing. It helps you connect better, and it helps you get the results that you want, and that's for him to be there for you. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, you know, equally, I, I also try to be there for him. I try not to be this, like, a sexist or a feminist person. <laughs> I just try to be equal and understand that each individual is different, so... If you're a woman that likes being a housewife at home and cooking and cleaning, that's great. That's what works for you. 
And if you're a woman that likes to be in the workplace and earning the bacon and everything, great. Again, that, that's that's good. That's good for you. <laughs> and, you know, I use the same stuff, uh, you know, understanding in my own relationship with my boyfriend. You know, uh, I do not want to make him uh, be the one that's the sole provider. So I do try to plan on getting a job myself. Um, equally, he does not mind helping me with dishes and such and such like that. Um, but so far, I've been the only one that's cooked so far. Uh, though it does seem like he might like to cook sometime for me one day. So, um, that's pretty much works for us because it's who we are individually. Uh, and that's why I say that, you know, I don't like judging or telling people how they should work their relationships. And I find it sad when others do that too. They're just like... You shouldn't let that man own you. You need to go get a job and you show him who can earn the bacon. And it's like, well, it's working for her to stay home and he's treating her right. Why go wreck that up? That's what's working for them. And then some women, they get so agitated. They're like, you're you're such a freaking feminist. You, you just want to rule over men and it, you have the job and you know, how dare you? You should be at home cooking your man a good dinner. And it's like, what? No, it's working for her to go out and work. It's working for him to stay home. Uh, you know, and some people, it works better for them to both have a job and both help in the home. Uh, you know, so I don't want to tell anybody how you should run your life personally. Um, but I do think this advice at learning what the other person needs to feel appreciated and to communicate with them. Um, I do think these are keys and tools that can help better reach to have the lifestyle you personally want to have. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to tell anybody to run their life. Just try to communicate a little bit and try to understand the other person a little bit. Um, and, you know, I think those are key things to a successful relationship. Um, at least for me personally, you know, when I've viewed think people and, you know, viewing my own life and viewing others' relationships, it does seem the key thing is to really understand the other person and to make sure that they're appreciating you equally just as much. Uh, and that uh, was something I forgot to mention when the communication part, um, you may have to communicate to them what makes you feel appreciated <laughs> in order for them to help you feel appreciated too. So that's why I was bringing up the communication thing. Uh, hope I'm not sounding too confusing now. No, I'm kind of babbling on. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm done now and you have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. And, uh, bye now.